Once our underlayment ceilings were installed, the next step was to put the original manufacturer's plywood back up and close off our insulation and electrical for good. Since each panel was marked in order when we took them off, it was fairly simple putting them all back into place. Next we started measuring and cutting the holes for our light switches, 12 volt USB chargers, and our 110 electrical outlets. We ended up using the Milwaukee Hardwood Cutting Blade for our Ryobi Oscillating Tool. This blade worked like a champ, made cutting extremely easy and super accurate. Our first cut was a large square where the collection of all 12 volt wires would feed into our electrical system in the dinette booth. We started with a 1 inch paddle bit for our USB charger holes. Unfortunately, when we went to test if the charger would fit, it didn't. We ultimately used the Diablo one and a quarter inch paddle bit and it was perfect for the job. We lined up all the panels, pulled all the wires through, and started drilling everything into place. And of course, to keep everything nice and tidy, James zip tied all the wires together. This is me excitedly opening our super awesome window from RecPro and getting ready for the window installation. Yeah, we guys can sell. But. That's the window. I have to frame around it, but because I actually have to cut two chunks, two sections of the steel tubing out, I have to reinforce it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two, uh, two by twos horizontally and then four vertical uh, two by twos, and then these are actually going to get screwed into the frame with self tapping with the steel with the metal screws, and then the window should sit in there nice and neat. So, window frame installation. The first thing I did was measure the height and width of the frame of the window. I cut two 2x2s two at 44 and a half inches long and four 2x2s two at 19 and 9 16 inches long using our Ryobi jigsaw. Okay, so I used the step stool as a support while cutting and I kind of forgot to move it out of the way of the camera. Sorry about that, I'll explain anyways. After cutting, I pocket screwed everything together. Don't forget to use your square to make sure everything is, well, square. We then measured and held up the frame where we wanted the window to go, and used a sharpie to trace the outline of the frame onto the insulation. Then we used our Ryobi oscillating tool to cut the furring strips, the insulation, and eventually the hollow square tubing steel frame.
Next, we attached three quarter inch particle board to the back of the wooden frame. This was mostly to get the tightest tolerance around the window since the corners of the window are round, but the frame is straight. If we wouldn't have done anything at all, all four corners would have had gaps. It also gave the window even more structural support. As you'll see later in this video, this method also gave us an exact measurement of where to cut the aluminum skin of the trailer. We're using our Ryobi Variable Speed Orbital Jigsaw to make this cut. This jigsaw actually has speed match technology that allows you to easily adjust your speed based on the material you're cutting. Then it was time for one of the scariest cuts we made, which was cutting out pieces of the steel frame. For this heavy metal task, we used the Milwaukee Carbide Extreme Metal Oscillating Blade. Paired with our Ryobi oscillating tool, this task turned out to be way less difficult than we anticipated. To fully remove the piece of the steel frame, we had to cut the silicone we used to leak proof everything, as well as remove the four screws holding it to the exterior of the trailer. And both the beams are gone. Right there they sit, right there they were, right there they're not. So during our cutting adventures, he went a little too happy. And... I got a little overzealous. Oh, so, in this epoxy, you have an outside and you have an inside. The inside and the outside, you're supposed to knead together and that's what activates the hardening mm. resin inside. Wow. So. Okay. Yeah, you cut off the desired amount. Be right in this moment. So you're mixing it up and you knead it. K-N-E-A-D, need. Although we do N-E-E-D, need this. Well, we unfortunately do <laughs> N-E-E-D it. Uh, until it's the same color, you get a uniform color. Seriously? Yeah, so it's gonna be a light gray color and a uniform need color like that. How long will it take to harden? Um, it usually takes like 24 hours to get fully hardened, but. Once we fit the window frame into place, we secured it into the two by twos and then finished putting up the rest of the original manufacturer plywood in the rest of the trailer. Okay. All the walls. Okay, so he just got done doing this Sharpie marker uh, outline for cutting. Kind of using that as a scribe base. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get real. Uh, we decided to shut the door so as to attempt to what uh, lower the noise. Yeah. We've got ear pro, eye pro, hand pro. Ear pro, eye pro, hand pro. And he's gonna get started. He's gonna do great. He's a little nervous. Don't be. It's gonna be great. I got a light, uh, so we're we're good to go. It's gonna be okay. It's All gonna right. fit perfectly. Yeah. Take that it away. 
For this cut, we used the same Milwaukee Carbide Extreme Metal Blade and of course, our trusted Ryobi 18 volt oscillating tool. I went nice and slow while cutting the aluminum so it had less of a chance of jumping off track. Side to hold this. Okay. ourselves a little half round file and flat file so with the flat edges use the flat side with the corners I'm gonna use the round side awesome, awesome. be sure not to skip this step this ensures both a proper fit for your window and proper seal for your butyl tape and silicone the file. Sure. Okay. So what do we do with these metal shavings? Um, these metal shavings, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take oh, no the way. magnet like this. This is going to be satisfying for people to watch. because it's aluminum. Yeah. Cool. We'll edit that out so you don't look. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Feels like it's stuck down on this bottom right. My bottom right, your bottom left. Yeah, we gotta come. So I have to cut like a little off here and I'm just gonna file it. Okay. And then I have to cut a little off here. You gonna file that? Yeah. Great. It'll be a little fine. That's great though, it was snug yeah. looking. Okay, so we have tried to fit this window in six different times and the top just wasn't fitting in. One thing, those little rivets right there were bumping into the aluminum. They're kind of eaten up actually because actually, of it. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, and they were um, preventing it from going all the way in. So we have, believe we have. I still see where there's a rivet mark right here. Okay, so he's going to try and get that away. Yeah. Um, and that is the reason why. So don't. Don't uh, just settle if it doesn't feel right. And I just kept saying like, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. And then we finally saw where it was hitting those little baby, they're totally eaten up now, those little baby rivets. So let's hope it fits. Yep. All right guys, after trial and error, we Got not really trial and error, just uh, filing down. It is, it is in, it is rough fitted in. All we have to do is lay some butyl tape down and that uh screw the uh frame into the yeah into the wood inside it's it's on there guys it's it's great good job We did 
double layer of beetle tape all the way around the window and made sure to smoosh both layers together to make sure there were no gaps. We fit the window in for the very last time and started the process of drilling it into place. Well that folks is our window. It's in completely all the way around. It is beautiful. It's amazing and I am just so proud and thankful. So thank you. And what we did have to do also, because the ring around the rose, around the rose, <laughs> the ring for the window was supposed to have screws that went in to this little channel to sandwich it together. Um, so because the window is thinner than the walls are thick, we're unable to use that ring. So what we have to do is now we're actually going to take, oh, let me, we put screws in through the frame into the wood. I don't know if you can see that right down there. Those One, are the two. screws that were supposed to be used for the trim piece. Correct. So they are painted black from the manufacturer. Yeah, we got two in there up there and two up top. I'm actually going to put two in each side. Okay. And uh, then it'll be 100% fully secure and waterproof because we got two layers of butyl tape and then we'll put a layer of silicone as well. Awesome. For our final walling option, we use the same beautiful 5mm wood underlayment panel that we used for our ceilings. This wood was so smooth and had such a pretty sheen to it, and thankfully all we had to do was brad nail it over the original wood paneling. Underlayment wall in. However many more to go. One and a half. Two, three, four, five. Seven? Six. Six and a half, I think. Looks nice. It does. All right, next piece. the aluminum cutout from the window to trace the opening onto the underlayment. After filling the brad nail holes on the underlayment with wood putty, I used our Ryobi 18 volt cordless orbital sander to sand everything to an even finish to get ready for paint. This is that beautiful sheen I was talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just soak this in. Oh, beautiful. We are making a lot of progress. We put up, I would say 50%. Did you say 50%? Half, about half the wall. 50 percent of our nice plywood uh, underlayment walls that we are going to be painting, our final walling. Um, we've also, uh, we were uh, uploading the video that was on our um, the last time that we were here. 
So we didn't catch this on video, but we are, um, we've put in the bottom part of the tank frame, tank frame, which is also going to serve eventually as the dinette platform. platform. So we'll show you that. That is the portion of the frame. Yep. Oh, and that's the tank. Hey, the tank. Frank, isn't it? Frank. Oh, sorry, I thought it was Hank. <laughs> we opted for our 39 gallon water tank to be on the inside of the trailer when we created our layout. This was mainly to ensure the water tank had less of a chance of freezing and cracking in cold weather places. So we had to build our dinette and bed on a platform nine inches above the flooring. Our water tank was almost six inches tall, but with the way we built it, the tank is secure in the frame that was made out of two by twos. With the way the tank was made, there was a low point reservoir on the very bottom, which is where the drain hole for the tank was located. We had to cut out a space into our flooring and insulation for that low point reservoir so that the tank would sit evenly on the floor. We also used a paddle bit to cut a hole into the bottom of the trailer flooring so the tank could drain out if needed. James continued the process of building and assembling the dinette platform. So today what we're doing is we're putting on some plumbing for the water tank. If you guys can see that right there, the uh, camera angled down. So I already did this first piece right here so I wouldn't mess up on camera and so I look like I know what I'm doing. Uh, next thing what we're going to do is we are going to just put a little piece right here. And then elbow this over that way. It's actually gonna elbow the other way because this is gonna go up here to the pump. And we'll go from there. So go ahead and get that piece on. We used half inch PEX piping for all of our plumbing. We also used half inch PEX clamps as well as our Apollo PEX pinch clamp tool. For our fill hose, we used heavy duty braided vinyl tubing. So far we have the flooring portion, the base of the tank frame done. Now we're gonna grab the tank, bring it in, see if it fits. Once Nick and James got the tank seated, it was time to sandwich both platform pieces together. Ever need one of these? 
angle bits. Go ahead and get yourself one. Thanks, Dewalt, for making our job easier. Now, this is a borrowed one from our good buddy Nick, neighbor across the street, graciously helping us, let us use some tools, giving us a hand, putting some stuff together. So, thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Say hi to the cam. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Well, we're going to keep building. Uno, dos, tres. The top of the platform and the bottom of the dinette seating needed to be very sturdy, so we decided to use 3 quarter inch plywood to ensure it would hold the weight of our dinette and bed without bowing. measured everything, rough fitted it in, and eventually drilled the platform top into place. successfully built one half of the dinette backing right here it's gonna go just like so and then we're gonna build the box off of the front of that so we can have a place to sit and eat Two-by-twos were used to build all parts of the dinette and dinette backing. This is a great example that shows exactly how Nick and I worked together throughout this build. We just lined stuff up and knocked it out like on an assembly line. It was awesome. Everything is pocket screwed together, but we also use galvanized hurricane ties to add that extra level of rigidity and support. Dinette booths were rough fitted in, I was invited out to see them, and James patiently answered my questions before calling it a night after a hard day's work. Join us on our next episode where we finally get to paint, we test our electrical lights, install our solar, and even start on our kitchen framing. Thanks for watching Home is Where the Hearts Are. 
Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.